Hey there! Today's demo is part two in a series on field parameters. So in part one we set up two sets of field parameters, one to select a dimension and one to select a measure. So when I select something the visual changes. And what we're going to do now is we are going to dynamically display a measure definition that is attached to the measure that's selected in the field parameter up here. So we've got, I've got it in two places. I have, just so you can see what it looks like, I honestly, I'd pick one or the other, um, but we've got a text box down here that is showing the definition. So sales amount is the sum of transaction line dollar amounts on orders. And we also have a tooltip icon. So this one, when I hover on it, it shows the same information. You can see when I select quantity up here instead of sales amount, these values change. So the way that we do this is by adding a column to our field parameter table. I'm going to show you how to do that. Switch to my other file. All right, so here's what we're starting with. We have our sales parameter measures, which look like this sales measures. Here we go. So it's this table here. And what we're going to do with this DAX is we're going to essentially add a column to this calculated table. And We're going to add a column to this calculated table. And to do that, what I'm going to do is just add a comma after the last part of both of these lines and then put in my description. So I'm going to say this is sales amount. Sales amount is a sum of transaction line amount. So this is useful when you find that people looking at your reports immediately say, well, what does this mean? What is this measuring? Having some text that tells people what is being displayed helps increase the trust level for the data that they're seeing. So obviously these um, these things that we're measuring are kind of self-explanatory, but if you have more complicated measures, it helps to call out exactly what's going on. So you do have to, when you add these values into these DAX lines, you have to add one for every single line. So if you don't have a definition for one of your measures that you're trying to display, just add two quotes like this and it'll it'll be blank basically. But you do have to have one in on every line or it will give an error. So I'm just gonna hit that. All right, so you see it created a new column on our table. I'm gonna rename this because value four is not super descriptive. You can just double click it to rename it. All right. So now what we can do is create a measure that displays that value. So that's what we're going to link to all of our displays. So I'm just going to go to my measures table and create a new measure. I'm going to call it, I always put the word text in front of my measures that are returning text values so that they all sort to the same place so it doesn't make a total mess of the uh, measures table. Usually I put these in folders too, but um, so we're going to call this measure description and we're just going to do a selected value and the description that we do. Oops, that's not it. Measure description, measure definition, that's what we called it. Measure definition and hit enter. All right. So now we have a measure to use. I'm going to add it to this text box. So you can insert measures in text boxes. Um, you'll notice that these ones, uh, these are things I've already inserted and these are underlined. When you publish this to the web app, they will not be underlined. I spent a bunch of time trying to figure out how to make the underline go away and it turns out that it doesn't even show up in the web app. So, All right, so let's insert 
our definition here. So I'm going to click on this plus value in the text box and I'm going to type in the exact name of the measure we just created. That was text and it popped up. Sometimes when you're typing these things it can take forever to populate so just give it a second if nothing shows up right away. I'm going to click on it to select it, give it a name down here. Give it and click save. All right, so let's test it out. I'm just going to select quantity over here and you'll see that it worked. The value is changing. So now we want to set up this same functionality using a an icon. So we'll go to the insert menu up here and then go to buttons and I'm going to use the little information icon. Drag that over here. So we want this to um, make it bigger. Uh, so we're going to go to the action menu for the button settings, and we're going to open that up. We're going to turn it on, and I'm going to change this from type back to web URL, and then leave the web URL field blank, just because I don't want when people click on it, I don't want it to take them back. Basically, there's, there's no none action here that just lets you do a tooltip. So we're going to do web URL and leave it blank. And we're going to go down to tooltip here. And we're going to expand that and click on this FX icon. And we're going to select our text measure description. And click OK. So now when we hover on this, you can see the definition here. And I am going to format this. So you could you could leave it like this. Um, I, I like these smaller, and when you make it smaller, the thickness is just too much. So we go to the style option, and I'm going to turn on text and Go to the icon and set the weight to one and then put in my text here. So I'm gonna call this definition and move that over. Sometimes the text doesn't line up exactly with the icon. Make that a little smaller. So what you can do is just adjust the padding. So I'm gonna go to the text and decrease the top padding. See how it moves the text up slightly. All right, so now when we switch this, the definition changes. And that is how to do conditional descriptions for your measures in Power BI. I'm planning on doing at least one more video on field parameters that describes how to use them in tables in interesting ways. So if that sounds interesting to you, just feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.